In a chaotic world in which women have somehow become infertile, a former activist agrees to help transport a miraculously pregnant woman to a sanctuary at sea. Welcome back to Movies Explained, today's film is an action drama from 2006 titled, Children of Men. In the year 2027, two decades after mankind became infertile, a new extinction was approaching due to an unknown cause. News of the death of the youngest person alive is reported all over news channels. At the age of 18 years, Diego Ricardo was the youngest person on earth, he was the last kid born before a worldwide infertility epidemic. Theo stands on a busy London street with a cup of coffee when an explosion occurs in a nearby store. He arrives at the Ministry of Energy, where his colleagues are in mourning over the death of baby Diego. Theo informs his supervisor Mr. Griffith, that the loss of baby Diego has profoundly affected him and that he would like to continue the day's work at home. The TV on the train shows scenes from cities all over the world in a state of chaos and disarray. People outside start throwing rocks at the train while Theo sits aboard the train, distractedly leaning against the glass. Groups of illegal immigrants are locked behind a fence, as Theo steps off of the train. As he passes, a lady cries out in a foreign language. Theo's friend Jasper greets him at the railway station and drives him to his residence. Their conversation focuses on who was responsible for the blast at a restaurant earlier that day. Jasper thinks the government was responsible, but Theo believes it could have been anyone. An unmarked bus carrying passengers from the railway station passes them as they drive, Jasper says they are Fujis, or illegal immigrants being transferred to a camp in Bexhill. Inside Jasper's residence, the wall is covered with images, including an award he earned in 2010 for Political Cartoonist of the Year and stories from almost two decades ago about the beginnings of fertility issues and the subsequent immigration crisis. The last photograph is of Jasper's wife, Janice, who was tormented from her job as a photographer who's left in a catatonic state. Theo and Jasper gently drape Janice's coat over her shoulders. Jasper shows Theo is marijuana grow and informs him that most of it goes to Bexhill. When asked about the human project, Jasper jokes about a supposed organization dedicated to searching for a cure for infertility. This is irrelevant to Theo since the world is already a mess. The following morning, upon waking up in his apartment, Theo heads out with police officers everywhere, and more arrested illegal immigrants as anarchy continues in London. Mourners have created shrines in honor of baby Diego. He gets dragged into a vehicle by masked men who leap on him as he walks. The men are from a group called the Fishes, which advocates for better treatment of migrants. Julian, Theo's ex-wife, is revealed to be the leader of the Fishes. He's taken aback by the sight of her. She claims that there was no other way to get to him. She explains that the Fishes are starting to gather support for their plight among the general public. They need Theo's help getting fictitious transit documents to smuggle a refugee to shore. She advises him to get in touch with his cousin, who she says has access to such records. She offers him £5,000 since she knows he needs the money. He is then blindfolded and led away so that he won't be aware of their hidden location. Luke, an influential FISH member, provides Theo with contact information just in case he changes his mind about helping them. Theo is driven to his cousin after a ride around some of London's most famous landmarks. His cousin Nigel, an art collector, lives in a high-security building in an old art museum. Theo makes up a story about the dying brother of his fictitious girlfriend and asks Nigel for help getting transit papers so she can visit her dying brother in Brighton. Theo meets Luke in the pub, where he informs him that he was only able to get joint transit papers, so he'll have to accompany the refugee if they pay him an extra couple of thousand. The following day, Theo meets Julian on the bus and hands her the documents. Seeing Theo makes Julian sad since their son Dylan, who died of the flu pandemic at six, had Theo's eyes. When they arrive, they are greeted by Luke, who offers to take them to the first checkpoint of their journey. They are transporting a young African refugee named Key, and a middle-aged lady named Miriam. After some light-hearted banter, a blazing car barrels down the hillside alongside the road, blocking their way. They get chased by an angry mob and as they try to flee, Julian gets shot and ultimately dies. When they are pulled over by the police, Luke gets out of the car and shoots and kills the two officers before fleeing. Miriam blesses Julian as they bury her in the woods. They drive to a safe house where high-ranking fish members have gathered to elect a new leader. During the meeting, Luke is elected as their new leader. Miriam informs Theo that Key wishes to speak with him in the barn. Key informs him that Julian told her to only trust him. When Theo attempts to decline involvement, Key shows him her belly, revealing that she is pregnant, which shocks Theo. The news reports that Julian, 
the terrorist group's leader, was killed by police during a shootout, and that the remaining members escaped and are armed and dangerous. A fish meeting is held to determine whether relocating Key to the human project is still the best option. Some members believe that she should stay and have the baby there, suggesting that the baby will be a symbol of unity, but Key is opposed to the idea of her child being politicized. Theo suggests making it public and getting her proper medical attention but everyone is against the idea. The fish argue that if they do so, the government would seize her baby, prop up an English woman as the mother and continue to treat refugees inhumanely. Luke advises Key to stay and have her baby there until tensions settle down, and afterwards promises to get her to the human project. Miriam believes that if Key stays, it would take months to get back in contact with the human project again. But ultimately, they want Key to make the final decision, and Key decides to stay and have her baby before going to the human project. Unable to sleep, Theo watches from his window as the fishes bring in a wounded man on a motorcycle. As he walks downstairs, he overhears Luke discussing orchestrating Julian's murder in order to take over the fish and use Key's baby as a political tool to recruit more members for the uprising. Theo awakens Key and Miriam and informs them of what he has heard. He warns them that if they do not leave immediately, he will be killed. As the sun comes up, they steal a car and drive off. Luke's men begin pursuing them but refrain from firing because Key is in the car. They manage to get away and seek shelter at Jasper's house. Miriam informs everyone that they will be transported to the human project in Azores by a hospital ship disguised as a fishing vessel called the Tomorrow. They've arranged to meet the ship at Bexhill when it arrives there in two days. When Theo asks Key who the child's father is, she responds that she is a virgin, which confuses Theo. However, she later tells him that she is joking and that she does not know who the father is since she has had many partners. She goes on to say that she was initially unsure about her pregnancy because she had never seen or spoken to a pregnant woman. She thought she had a virus, but everything changed when she felt the baby kick for the first time and realized she was pregnant. She wants to name the baby Froli, but Theo replies that the world hasn't seen a baby in 18 years and she can't call it Froli. Jasper has a plan to get them into the refugee camp at Bexhill, they will pretend they are refugees that have been arrested and a border guard Jasper knows will transfer them to the refugee camp. During the night, Jasper's alarm goes off, and they see several fish members storming Jasper's property. They rush out of the house and head out to meet Sid, the border guard. Jasper says he'll stay back and send them in the wrong direction to buy some time. Jasper tells him that the code word when they see Sid is, fascist pig. When the three of them leave in their car, Jasper poisons Janice and their dog, and waits for the fish to arrive. When the fishes arrive, Theo and Miriam park the car on a hill above the house and go outside to see what happens to Jasper. They tell Jasper that they know Theo was here two weeks ago and demand to know where they are, but Jasper mocks them and they execute him. They arrive at an abandoned school, where they're supposed to meet Sid. As Key swings in the yard, Theo and Miriam chat in an empty classroom. Miriam tells Theo the story of the infertility problem and how it began. A siren sounds outside, and a police officer appears. Theo follows Jasper's instructions and calls him a fascist pig. The police officer looks like he's about to attack him for being called a fascist pig, but then starts to laugh and says his name is Sid. Sid loads them into his car and drives to the refugee holding facility, where refugees are loaded onto buses and transported to the Bexhill refugee camp. Sid instructs them to find a lady called Marichka, who will provide them with a place to stay. Key's water breaks on the way and she is forced to act normal so that the guards do not discover what is going on. When they arrive at the Bexhill facility, police officers board the bus, they notice Key moaning in pain and want to know what's wrong with her. In order to divert attention away from Key, Miriam stands up and starts reciting a prayer. The officer strikes her and has her removed. When they try to remove Key, Theo points on the water and informs the officers that she urinated and the officer leaves in disgust. Upon arrival at the camp, they locate Marichka, the lady they were instructed to look for, and she drives them to a place to stay. Marichka leads them to a shabby apartment, where Key struggles to climb the stairs. Theo cuts Marichka's presentation short and leads her out of the room so he can help deliver the baby. Key is in a lot of pain and unable to push but Theo gives her words of encouragement, shortly after a baby girl is born screaming. Key cradles her kid in her arms, unable to believe what she's seeing. The following morning, they are startled when Sid and Marichka come banging on the door. Sid informs them that the British army is planning to bomb Bexhill, and he also informs them that a battle between them and the refugees is imminent. Sid observes Key concealing something and inquires about it, 
When Ki realizes she has no choice, she reveals the baby to them. They are shocked to see the infant. Theo requests their help in finding a boat to get them out of there. On their way down, Sid informs them that the police and the fishes both have a large reward on their heads, he escorts them out of the building at gunpoint in an effort to turn them in. Marichka and Theo attack Sid and are able to take him down and escape. Outside an armed uprising is brewing as the refugees chant Allah Akbar, while carrying their dead. A friend of Marichka's invites Key and Theo inside his apartment after seeing the baby. An elderly lady sings a lullaby to the infant while Key and her daughter rest in the flat. Key jokes about naming the child Bazooka and Theo replies that he was barely getting used to folly. A man informs Theo that they have found a boat and they'll be leaving in an hour. He asks Theo if the human project is real and Theo tells him that he hopes so. They head out with Key in a wheelchair shielding the infant from view as full-scale fighting has erupted. The refugees and the British soldiers are engaged in full-scale combat. They are ambushed by a gang of fish, and Luke emerges, instantly noticing Key and ordering his men not to kill Theo. Luke informs them that the uprising has begun and they haven't even seen the baby. They hold Theo and Marichka at gunpoint while Luke flees with Key. Shortly after, during a gunfight, the fish are distracted and Theo and Marichka are able to escape. Theo abandons Marichka and heads off to locate Key and the baby. He sees them fleeing into a building as a tank and soldiers engage them. Theo runs inside the building and searches each floor for Key as bombs and machine gun fire are continuously heard. Theo locates Key hiding in a corner as Luke fires on the soldiers from above. Luke tells Theo that Julian was mistaken, he cannot understand how there can be peace while the government continues to take away their dignity. Shortly after an explosion kills Luke as Theo and Key escape. As they flee, the baby begins to cry and scream, forcing everyone to stop what they're doing and gather to see the miracle. The soldiers make their way in the building and they too are shocked at what they're seeing. All fighting comes to a halt as Theo and Key walk out of the building. Shortly after an RPG is fired from the building and the fighting erupts once again, and Theo and Key take off, running into Marishka on the way. She escorts them to a building with access to a waterway, and a boat waiting for them. As they row towards the ocean, jets are seen passing overhead and completely obliterating the refugee camp. Key sees blood in the boat and panics, she tells Theo that she's bleeding but Theo informs her that he's the one bleeding, that he has been shot. Theo instructs Key to keep the baby close to her no matter where she goes. He shows her how to hold the baby and soothe her when she sobs. Theo grins as the infant settles down, even though he is visibly losing strength. Key tells him that she will name the baby Dylan, in memory of Theo's child that passed away, which puts a brief smile on Theo's face, before his eyes shut and he passes away. Shortly after, Key sees the boat in the distance and informs Theo in excitement, she tells him that they're safe now, and begins to hum a lullaby. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos.